What's up guys? Jeff with HKS Systems Lock and Safe. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, got a new tool on the rig. Uh, this is the Contender. It's a headset lock amplifier. Basically like a, a really nice microphone you would use to take either contact points or listen to things in safes. Um, by the way, this is my scope kit. Um, that's my top level of stuff that I have use all the time. And then this is for longers and just doubles of things have many more but these are like my everyday carry set um yes there are a lot but occasionally you do have an accident or something doesn't work right gets dirty or god forbid bid the lens breaks in there then you have to have a second set so yeah there's pretty much doubles here of everyone and then triples here of everyone as well um, but yeah, this is the uh, lock contender, a lock amplifier. It's really nice. Uh, we're going to do a safe this morning. Um, it's going to be an antique, so I'm really not using it for that. But tomorrow morning, I have to go to Wisconsin, and I have to go open up a electric safe lock. And I do want to verify things are running before I get drilling. Um, whenever I can, I don't want to necessarily drill a safe, but it sometimes happens. So, you know, that's part of the job. But if I could troubleshoot it from the outside, that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to do the antique today. I'm going to troubleshoot it and see what model's in there. Um, he has no combination. It's uh, probably a 1920s, 1930s safe. It's a uh, old safe, I'm guess It's Yale is the maker of the safe lock. I know that much. So it's going to be one of two things. The way to do that, though, is to... A, know what's behind the door, and to do that, you have to do some dialing diagnostics, which will tell me what's behind the door. Then that will tell me how I'm going to drill it and uh, get that in. And like I said, that's uh, going to be one of these little guys, just the eighth inch hole, uh, 2.7 millimeters, more than enough room to get in there and see what I need to see. Um, yeah, so the, for those that don't know, these are light sources. Basically, they're uh, used to uh, light through the tube of the actual um, scopes. And then these are different degrees of scopes. So there's zero degree, which is straightforward, 25 degree, 30 degree, and 70 degree, 90 degree, 110 degree. Um, so it depends what you need. Um, certain... Times you need a different type of view. You need be, to be able to see in a different area. So we're going to go uh, open up that uh, antique safe. It's going to be an old Schwab. And I'll post a picture here. All right, that's an old guy. Yeah, he's uh, probably about 40 minutes away from me. I don't know the deal. He's either bought it or got it or was given it and doesn't have a combination. So I gave him the price. He said, yeah, let's do it. So going to go drill that decode it uh spit polish it for him and then turn it back over to him so i'll upload what i can guys take care we'll catch up with you later back with you so we opened up that safe one eighth inch hole 2.7 millimeters to be uh, specific for my european or people that use the metric i don't like america that doesn't use that um so what did i use uh eighth inch drill bit and that guy that's my cricket um it's only about four inches uh deep into the door so not a big deal drilled it filled it decoded it repacked it with teflon made sure everything was working really nice for the guy um, now i'm just doing my routine maintenance i know you've guys seen that before i just usually clean um, the tools that i use when i'm there um, as you can see they're glass um, and metal but you could see maybe you could see that um, some of the debris from the fireproofing gets on there that's easier just to clean it out when it's fresh. Sometimes I'll do it on site. Sometimes I won't. I was in a hurry to get out of there and get back here. I got other stuff to do. 
So if you need that safe stuff, give Jeff a call. Let me upload a little picture here of the safe being open. Good to go there. Um, nice, nice guy. I uh, gave him the quote and lived by it. So uh, really easy, really nice, probably about a 1930s safe. So uh, closing in about 100 years old right now. So um, yeah, other than that, if you guys need that service for safe stuff, that was going to be a Schwab model safe with a Yale open bottom system. And there are two different safe locks that usually has. I was able to just take it from the outside, do some dialing diagnostics to figure out which one it was. 50% of the battle's done. Then I just got to drill into the proper hole, decode it with the scope. So you need that stuff, give Jeff a call. Take care, guys. What's up, guys? Jeff with HKS Systems Lock and Safe. Just catching up with you. I'm heading out this morning to go do some safe work, some access control. Um, we, this morning, our first thing is we're going to go do access control. Unfortunately, the company that they, um, I'm going to, they had an IT guy that was in charge of that and he, uh, took off and left. So, um, one of those things, they never cross trained anybody and one guy only knew all the secrets and unfortunately he left and he's no longer answering the phones to him. So don't blame him there, but we're going there. I got to go show them how to work the system. Hopefully the guy hasn't changed much in there and I could still get in there. If not, we have to hard reset everything. That's alarm lock, uh, PDL 1300s and uh, panic bar one. I forgot which one it was, ETDL, something or other. But either way, um, alarm lock systems that I put in. Uh, it's been serving them very well for the last probably five years. Uh, no issues, but he was the only guy that had programming. Uh, with that, you do need a specialized cable. It's that guy there. They don't even know where that's at. They said they have the laptop with all the stuff on there, supposedly, but no cable. So, not going to help them. So, I'm going to sell them a new one of those, too. Cross train them a little bit. Uh, give them the odds and ends. It's going to be Memorial Day coming up, so I'm assuming they just want to lock the doors so it doesn't automatically open on Monday. No big deal couple different ways to do that uh, but we're also going to take on a uh, field and stream safe so I'm going to be taking the scopes with should be even if I have to drill eighth inch hole totally tiny uh, so what am I taking scopes obviously we need to see what's on the other side of the door I'm just taking some of the really tiny drill bits and I got a couple ways to get into these guys um, you could do the face or I actually don't do from side drilling and scoping and uh, don't even need hard like a hard carbide bit you could use literally the cheapo cheapo but I enjoy the, uh, the task of just trying to use the smallest bit I can and that's usually what I use is the eighth inch bit totally tiny um, he was all worried about drilling I'm like you're not even gonna know where I drilled if you weren't in the room with me watching you wouldn't even know where I drilled when I'm done so uh, taking the drills the uh, touch-up kit, because it's literally just one drip of of uh, nail polish, black nail polish, goes right back to where everything was when I got there. And uh, I'm leaving that bottom section. That's for the uh, electronic bypasses on Sargent and Greenleaf stuff and other brands. Not even taking that kit. Um, shouldn't need any of that. I do have a redundance in my kit systems in the truck as well. Um, Really in here, all I would use would be uh, for drilling um, mechanical or electronic locks, stuff like that. We're not going to be doing that, so really nothing in there is needed necessarily. Is it nice to have? Yeah, but it also takes up room. And I got a small truck, so trying to do as little as I can in there. Um, this week we've got three safes in three days, just like typical weeks. Um, I usually do at least one safe job a day, and then I... Uh, you know, always do that first thing in the morning, 8 o'clock, 8.30, depending where I'm located at from the safe job. And then I do other jobs to fill in the rest of the day. So we will be back. It's going to be a, I'll upload a picture here. And yeah, that's a uh, field and stream model. And from what I've been told, his combination stopped working. I don't know. 
you never know when you go into these things what you're really going to get. A lot of times people have, you know, either dialing diagnostics, they don't have the right combination, or they, you know, transpose numbers. You really never know what you're getting into. Malfunctions, okay? Or even deaths in the family. That's, that's a thing that's always happening with my trade is deaths in the family. So um, I actually have a family friend, sort of like a person I know from high school that, you know, wasn't even friends with, but I know who they are. They know who we are. Um, they passed away. Their family contacted me, and I don't know any of them. So, I, you know, I said, that's fine. I'm more than happy to come out and help you. I had helped them in the past with their father's estate. Um, they called me back and I just said, you know, just the typical thing with death in the family. All I need is a power of attorney from a lawyer saying that you're the guy in charge of the show because Jeff Rowe don't play that game. I'm not going up in safes when somebody's not supposed to be in there. So all I need is power of attorney paperwork. We're good to go. I'll take care of you from there. Um, but they have not contacted me. So that's got a couple questions on my mind of should they be in there? I don't know. Um, I will tell you, they were a family that uh, won a lottery back in the day, and they've had nothing but bad luck since. So, yeah, one of those things, the terrible curse of the lottery. Nice people, but, yeah, bad lotteries, a lot of early deaths in the family, and, you know, one of those things. So, anyways, uh, we're going to uh, go take care of these guys, and I'll upload uh, some stuff as I get finished. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.